subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm yeshi chonzo Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday the 9th of February. Protests intensify across India over hijab row in southern Karnataka. Kashmiri political activist blames Pakistan for destruction of Kashmir. And Incoming head of US Central Command Kurela warns of reconstituting Al Qaeda and ISIS. And now for all the details. Protest over the hijab row in India's southern Karnataka state intensified on Wednesday as students from other parts of the country extended their support to Muslim women students who have been barred from entering educational institutions if they wear the traditional head covering. The Karnataka High Court hearing the case related to hijab ban in school college campuses referred the matter to a larger bench while schools and colleges in the state were closed for 3 days in wake of the escalating tension. Students across India extended their support to Muslim women students as protests intensified over a ban on hijab, a traditional head covering, in educational institutions in southern Karnataka state. The pro-hijab protesters holding placards and banners took to the streets and raised slogans against the order by the Karnataka Education Ministry, saying that wearing hijab is their fundamental right to religion. Opposition parties and critics have accused the ruling BJP government at the center and state level of discriminating against religious minorities and running the risk of stoking violence. Just judge me by what in my head not by what's on my head. And hijab is our right. It's a fundamental right. We are we can say proudly that hijab is our fundamental rights. Meanwhile, authorities in Karnataka's Bengaluru city on Wednesday ordered a ban on protests near educational institutions for two weeks, while schools and colleges across the state were shut down for three days. Tensions frayed earlier this week after some students with saffron shawls, typically worn by Hindus, thronged into classrooms to show their support of the hijab ban. The Karnataka High Court hearing a petition in the matter on Wednesday referred the case to a larger bench while the judge appealed for peace and calm. In news from Pakistan, Pakistani opposition leader Shahbaz Sharif on Tuesday held a meeting with leaders of MQMP in order to seek support from the allies of the ruling PTI government to oust its leader and prime minister Imran Khan. This comes as opposition parties are scheduled to hold rallies over soaring inflation in the country. The MQMP has sought time to respond. A day after Pakistan People's Party leader Asif Ali Zardari called on the leaders of PMLQ opposition PMLN president Shehbaz Sharif on Tuesday met and sought the help of another government's ally the Mutahida Qaumi Movement Pakistan or MQMP in the opposition's renewed efforts to oust Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. During a meeting at Sharif's residence in Lahore, MQMP leader Amir Khan said that the people want to get rid of the government as soon as possible but sought time to respond. Shehbaz said he was hopeful MQMP will think of the people of Pakistan who are suffering because of the poor policies of the government amid rising inflation, while Prime Minister Khan is not worried about their problems at all. जो हमारी गुफ्तगू हुई है वो हम जाकर अपनी हाई कमान को अपने रबता कमेटी में सारी चीजें उनके इल में ले आएंगे फिर जो भी फैसला होगा मुल्क की बेहतरी के लिए उसके ऊपर This comes as the opposition parties have decided to carry out anti-government long march rallies over the rising inflation on February 27 and on March 23. The country's inflation rate has risen to 13% in January from a year earlier, the highest in 2 years. Political activist Mahmood Kashmiri has blamed Pakistan of being responsible for the destruction of Kashmir, saying that Islamabad practices hypocrisy, not solidarity with the people of Kashmir. He accused Pakistan falsely claims to have granted autonomy to Pakistan administered Kashmir 
but instead it continues to violate rights of people of the illegally occupied region. Mehmood Kashmiri, chairman of Jammu Kashmir National Independent Alliance, has slammed Pakistan, blaming it of being responsible for the destruction of Kashmir, and said that Islamabad practices hypocrisy, not solidarity with the people of Kashmir. Speaking virtually with activist Dr. Shabir Chaudhary, Mehmood said, Pakistan annually observes Kashmir Solidarity Day in February, but people in its illegally occupied territories of Pakistan-administered Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan are denied even basic fundamental rights and are meted out with severe brutality for voicing their concerns. He said Pakistan falsely claims to have granted autonomy to the region, but elected officials have no say in the policy making and are only there to execute orders of Islamabad installed lent officers. So Pakistan ke zere kabza jo riyasat Jammu Kashmir ke alake hain jis jaise Gilgit Baltistan hai aur ye jo Pakistani maqbooza Kashmir jise azad Kashmir kaha jata hai. Yahan par to Pakistan ne kisi kism ki azadi di nahi hui. यहां पर तो लोगों को बोलने का लोगों को हक हासिल नहीं है गिलगित बल्तिस्तान में जो है वो शेड्यूल फोर है और वहां पर लोगों पर उन्होंने बगावत और गदारी के मुकदमे दर्ज कर रखे हैं तो फिर हमारे साथ तो इजारी जगजाति हो ही नहीं सकता ना The activist further highlighted even after over 70 years locals have no access to electricity and water while Islamabad continues to exploit their natural resources He said with no legal recourse available an assertive international intervention is the only way the hapless people can be saved from imminent doom Moving on days after nearly 45 graves belonging to the minority Ahmadiyya community were allegedly desecrated by police and Muslim clerics for using Islamic symbols on gravestones at a cemetery in Pakistan's Lahore The Human Rights Commission of Pakistan has expressed outrage and concern over the incident. The rights group said such acts are becoming almost routine, leaving members of the Ahmadiyya community as beleaguered in death as they are in life. The commission in a statement demanded action against the perpetrators and said the desecration of graves is an affront to human dignity and must not be permitted. Activists say Ahmadiyya community has been facing persecution and targeted violence for several decades in Pakistan due to draconian legislative laws over accusations their faith insults Islam. In 1974 Pakistan's constitution was amended and the Ahmadiyyas were declared as non-Muslims and eventually in 1984 the Pakistani government enacted ordinance and made it a criminal offense for them to call themselves as Muslims or to refer their faith as Islam. The White House speak to head US Central Command Lieutenant General Michael Kurela in testimony to the Senate Armed Services Committee during his confirmation hearing on Tuesday warned that Al Qaeda and ISIS are reconstituting. Military leaders need to invest more in intelligence capabilities, particularly informants on the ground, if they expect to be able to continue effective counterterrorism operations in Afghanistan, he said. Lieutenant General Michael Kurela, US President Joe Biden speak to be commander of Central Command, warned Al-Qaeda and ISIS were reconstituting in a wide-ranging Senate confirmation hearing on Tuesday. Kurela said that the Taliban has not renounced Al-Qaeda. Earlier, the report of the UN Security Council on activities of the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda and their affiliates made public this week said terror group Al-Qaeda's Indian subcontinent affiliate has retained a presence in at least 6 provinces of Afghanistan and has approximately 200 to 400 fighters. Senator, as as you identified, well, one of the challenges is the threat to the homeland from Al-Qaeda and ISIS-K. They are reconstituting Um, the Taliban has not renounced Al Qaeda. ISIS K, um, with the release of the prisoners both from the Bagram prison and Pol Sharki, are in the process of reconstituting. While they have aspirations to attack the homeland, um, they do not have the capability yet. Additionally, we have the humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan. Al Qaeda has received a significant boost following the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan in August last year. as some of its closest sympathizers within Taliban now occupy senior positions in the new Afghan government 
Meanwhile, the United States said on Monday it was offering a reward of up to 10 million US dollars each for information leading to the identification or location of ISIS-K leader Sanaullah Ghaffari and for information leading to the arrest of those responsible for a deadly August 2021 attack at Kabul airport. Ghaffari was responsible for approving all ISIS-K operations throughout Afghanistan and arranging funding to conduct operations, the US State Department said. The bombing occurred on August 26 as U.S. troops were trying to help both Americans and Afghans flee in the chaotic aftermath of the Taliban's takeover and compounded America's sense of defeat after 20 years of war. 13 U.S. troops and at least 170 Afghans were killed in the bombing. The Nepal government has reacted to a recent report by UK TV network BBC News on encroachment by China on Nepalese land and said that the issue should be dealt with on the basis of reality, not on reports. Government spokesperson and Minister for Information and Communication Gyanendra Bahadur Karki at a regular press conference on Tuesday said we should deal it not on the basis of reports but on the basis of reality at appropriate times. The reality should be studied promptly and the government would publicize official statement thereafter only. He expressed his confidence that border issues would be resolved through diplomatic efforts. A leaked Nepal government's report commissioned last September has accused China of encroaching into western Nepal in Humla district along their shared border. The report was leaked by BBC. Despite all evidence on the ground, the government's report is now pending with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Chinese embassy in Kathmandu has denied that there has been any encroachment, but the report is likely to put pressure on Nepal's growing links with China. Mountaineers from the Indian Army on Wednesday rescued a tracker who was stranded without food and water for nearly 48 hours in the cleft of a steep hill in the southern Indian state of Kerala. 23-year-old Arbapu slipped and fell into the crevice on Monday while on a hike with three friends. He got stuck in the cleft and had only enough space to sit inside it. Three different rescue teams had failed to reach him earlier. On Wednesday morning, the Indian Army finally made contact. As soon as he was rescued, the Army personnel fed him food and water and he was moved to the district hospital. Kerala's Chief Minister Pinarai Vijayan took to Twitter and thanked the rescue team for timely support and for saving the man's life. The 1,000 feet Kurambachi Hill in Kerala is known for its steep terrain and the state's forest department has previously warned trackers about the risk of hiking up the hill. India's coronavirus cases continue to decline and with that, several states have eased COVID-19 restrictions. Priests in northern Varanasi city on Tuesday performed the Ganga Aarti, a sacred Hindu fire ritual of worshipping the holy Ganges river after a month of being closed for devotees due to coronavirus. After a month of being closed for devotees due to coronavirus, priests in India's northern Varanasi city on Tuesday performed the Ganga Aarti, a sacred Hindu fire ritual of worshipping the holy Ganges river. A huge crowd of devotees gathered at the Dasheshwamed Ghat on the Ganges River bank to witness the Aarti, where a group of priests performed rituals accompanied by hymns and chiming of bells to appease Goddess Ganga. Corona के बढ़ते संक्रमण को देखते हुए लगभग एक महीने से घाट पे आना प्रतिबंधित हो गया था इस वजह से माँ की जो आरती है वो सांकेतिक आरती हो रही थी एक आरती हो रही थी अब वो वापस पुनः स्वरूप अपनी आरती सात अर्शकों द्वारा भगवती माँ गंगा की महा आरती प्रारंभ हो चुकी है India's active cases comprise 2.11 percent of the total infections, while the national COVID-19 recovery rate has improved to 96.70 percent. आरती चालू हो गई तो काफी अच्छा लग रहा है आरती बंद होने से काफी लोगों को दुख पहुंचा था भावनाओं को काफी टेस्ट पहुंचा था लेकिन यह है कोविड प्रोटोकॉल का पालन करते हुए आरती होना चाहिए प्रोटोकॉल जरूरी है पालन करना कोविड का The Ganges is one of the most revered rivers in the world it is worshiped by Hindus who make up about 80% of India's 1.3 billion people they call it Ganga Mata or Mother Ganga and believe a dip in the river absolves a lifetime of sins. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.